Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Automating Grant Management with eForms. My name is Grace Ding, and I'm a marketing specialist here at LaserFiche with a special focus on higher education. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you'll find this webinar actionable and informative. Here at LaserFiche, we are passionate about making your job easier by providing you with technology solutions that are user-friendly and take away the burden of repetitive, manual, and paper-heavy processes. So today I'm going to talk first a little bit about why we're focusing on electronic forms specifically and why it's an important tool for you as a higher education administrative or IT officer. Then I'll jump straight into a live demonstration of what using eForms to streamline business processes looks like using a grant management process as an example. And finally, I'm going to talk about a real-life use case of an institution using forms to improve university operations, uh, grant management in particular. If you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to type it in the Q&A or chat box at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, and I will do my best to answer them at the end. All right. So the first step in talking about any technology solution is pinpointing the specific business problem you're trying to solve. And from our many years of experience working closely with higher education institutions, we've discovered that there are a few main sources of process inefficiencies that we've heard time and time again. And the first, of course, is paper. Higher, higher ed is notorious for paperwork, partly because we're such a highly regulated industry, and partly because many of our institutions have been around for decades. And that's the way we've always done things. It's become a way of life for students, faculty, and staff. There's a form for pretty much everything, from requesting facilities maintenance, to applying for a grant, to class registration, to changing classes they originally registered for. And the abundance of paper as a source of inefficiency goes hand in hand with our second challenge, and the pun hand in hand is intended here, because that's manual processes. Forms have to be filled in by hand at the relevant office, then staff members have to sort through these forms, shuffle them along through approval chains, type up the information in core systems, and then file them away in filing cabinets. Think about every time you've had to chase down someone for their signature or approval, or you've answered angry calls asking about where a request is, and have to look through rows of filing cabinets to find that one document. Or you've received an incomplete form that you need to return to sender, which delays an entire process. At best, this is time you could better spend working on something more important. But at worst, this may mean that a student doesn't get into that course they needed in order to graduate, or that faculty member doesn't get the grant she wanted for her project or a vendor doesn't get paid on time and conflicts arise. These inefficiencies are endlessly frustrating, and more importantly, waste time and money and valuable resources. And finally, the third major source of process inefficiency is silos, not just of information, but also communication. Any given institution is using a number of different systems, and any given process involves a number of different departments and stakeholders. And it's always a challenge to make sure that all these pieces fit together and that people are talking to each other in the most efficient way possible. But the good news is there is a tool that can solve these business problems and inefficiencies for you, and that is electronic forms. With eForms, you can take charge of process management. Beyond simply getting rid of paper, you now have the capability to capture information more accurately, to quickly search for and find the information that you need to make decisions more effectively, 
to distribute and communicate information to stakeholders in a timely manner, and finally, to securely manage all this important data with more confidence. This process automation streamlines your business operations from cradle to grave, and you can apply this optimized approach to information management across all departments on your campus using eForms. So as I go through the live demo a little later, even though it will be the grant management process specifically, just remember to keep in mind the processes that you deal with on a daily basis and think about ways that you can streamline those processes using the tools that I'm going to show you. Before I jump into the demo, I want to make sure we're all on the same page regarding what we're talking about when we talk about eForms. It's no longer a rudimentary tool that is just a replacement for paper forms. At LaserFiche, we've been developing our eForms tool for many years based on constructive feedback from our higher education users. So I want to go through what we see as some of the key features that a good eForms tool should have. The most obvious, of course, is the forms piece. The basic characteristic is that eForms should be easily accessible and user-friendly, so they can be hosted on intranets, student portals, public websites, and easily available to all the users that need to have access to them. But a good solution should also be able to tie in with any existing system that you might be using, such as your CRM or your Electronic Research Administration system or your SIS system so that information doesn't have to be manually typed in. But more importantly, this also increases and ensures data accuracy. But the real powerhouse behind an excellent e-form solution is the process automation piece. This needs to be robust, but also intuitive and easy to use, and should be compliant with business process notation which is a standard for all industries. All right, now that I've given you a brief introduction, let's take a look at LaserFiche eForms in action. I'm gonna go ahead and switch my screen to my demo. The demo that I'll be showing you today is for a grant management process, which is where faculty members at an institution who wish to apply for a grant for a research project work with the institution's Office of Sponsored Programs or Research Administration to prepare those proposals and get them submitted to the funding agency. Specifically, I'm going to demonstrate how you can streamline the proposal submission, review, approval, and archival process through a single platform like LaserFiche. Now, there are three main challenges with a process like grant management, and as I walk through the demonstration, I'm going to show ways in which we address these challenges with the solution that we've built. The first challenge is that you have a lot of information that needs to be compiled from a number of different sources, and you want to be able to capture this information accurately and completely from the very beginning. The second challenge is that the process involves a number of different people. You have your faculty members, you have your research administration staff, you have department chairs and other folks who need to approve the proposal. And then you have external users, such as staff and faculty from other institutions. So the question is, how are you going to centralize communication and facilitate collaboration with all the stakeholders in a single platform? And the third challenge is that higher ed is a highly regulated industry. And with grant management especially, it is vital to document and track all the activities throughout the process for auditing and security purposes. The solution that you go with needs to be able to handle security, version control, and access rights, both in broad terms and in granular terms. 
So what you're seeing on the screen right now is sort of the, the back end. This is where we design the actual process itself. And if I zoom out a little bit here, it looks a little complicated, but actually, it's a very simple interface to use. So this is part of the user friendliness and intuitive design that I was talking about earlier. All these icons that you see on this canvas correspond to certain tasks and automated um, events that need to occur for the process to move smoothly. And all of these events can be built through this drag and drop interface um, based on the icons that we've created on the side for you. So let me just go through what this process involves before I jump into actually running through the process itself. So with grant management, the first step is submission of a notification of intent. And this just lets the Office of Sponsored Programs, uh, in this example, we're going to use the OSP as the uh, middle person between the faculty member and the funding agency. So the faculty member, the primary investigator on this research project, submits a notification of intent, and this lets the OSP know that there is a proposal on the way, so they can start getting ready and getting prepared to support this uh, faculty member in their proposal preparation. Then the primary investigator, the PI, is taken directly to a proposal data sheet where they will fill in uh, some more details about their project proposal specifically, including all the people that will be involved in the project. Then there will be a step where they need to provide financial disclosure, and I'll go a, a little bit into this a little later on what this is, but uh, it's another form that they need to submit and other information that they need to collect from other folks that will be involved in the project. If there's a co-primary investigator, then they will also need to perform this task. And then after those initial documents have been submitted, um, these are routed to the OSP for a initial compliance review. So the OSP looks through everything, makes sure that they have everything they need to sort of kick off the process. If there's any thing missing or anything that needs to be um, submitted in addition, we've created a, a loop so that the primary investigator can go ahead and resubmit that, and I'll show you an example of that as well. And then after the compliance review has been completed, the proposal packet is routed to the department chair for approval. After the, so the department chair can either approve or reject this proposal packet. If it's rejected, then everything is saved into Laserfiche and the PI is notified that their proposal has been rejected, and that's where the process ends. If it's approved, then the application packet will be saved in a different folder within Laserfiche, um, as well as all the other information that's involved, and then the PI will be notified of the proposal review, uh, approval. And then um, there's the process of assembling the actual grant application itself, and for the purpose of, of this demo, this is going to happen outside of Laserfiche, um, but the OSP is going to record when they are able to submit that grant application, and then whether or not there is a need to submit uh, what's called just-in-time information, which is essentially additional documents that might need to be submitted after the main grant application has been submitted to the funding agency. So we have a little section here, if just-in-time information is required, um, then the OSP will wait on notification for that, compile all the documents, and then go ahead and submit it. And that information will be saved inside Laserfiche, and the PI will be notified. If there's no just-in-time information needed, then the PI will simply be notified that their grant application has been submitted, and they'll be um, given status updates when the OSP receives them. So this process is kind of handling the, what's called the pre-award process um, before an actual uh, grant is awarded. All right, now that I've outlined the process, the basic process, let me go ahead and jump right into it. So if you remember the first step that I mentioned 
is that the faculty member, who I'll refer to here as the PI, Principal Investigator, or Primary Investigator, needs to go ahead and submit their notification of intent, uh, letting the OSP know that they intend to submit a proposal or grant application. So this is an example of an electronic form. You can see it's very clean, it's very easy to understand. Um, it's very, this particular form is very simple. But um, if you want to, for example, tie in the form with an existing um, faculty member database or, or any other existing system, um, you can use unique identifiers like a faculty ID, for example, to auto-populate the form. Um, I don't have this in this case because we're not tied to a faculty database, but that's something to consider. All right, so I'm going to fill in this form as if I were a faculty member, PI. Um, the great thing about eForms is you can have dynamic fields. So we can show or hide sections depending on what's relevant to this particular user. And this is helpful because in our experience, all of the times, the forms that folks have to fill out are kind of repetitive and also very long. So this um, feature of dynamic fields helps helps you consolidate a lot of those forms into one, um, but also makes it short and easy to fill in for the end user. In this case, I don't have a co-PI, it's just me. Um, I'm going to be researching a cure for the Zika virus. It's gonna be a new proposal, and I'm going to the grant application deadline, let's say is end of December. Now the great thing about, um, again, an automated process like this is, if I set a deadline like this, I can then um, have the system send out email notifications for the stakeholders involved in the process to make sure that we're gonna get all, everything done in time to meet this particular deadline. So it's not just recording what date it's supposed to be due, but it's also functionally um, keeping us in line and making sure that nothing falls through the cracks. And especially for a process like grant management, where it might take a really, really long time from when the faculty member initially submits this form to when they finally hear back um, from the funding agency. So it's important that the system is keeping track of all these important dates. Uh, the other great thing is you can upload documents directly through the electronic form itself. And so this reduces the need um, for many institutions for faculty members to either come directly to the OSP to hand in their um, documents um, or uh, a lot of coordination through emails and things like that that might get lost in the shuffle. So everything can be done through this one simple form. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and submit this. And what happens is the next form that I will have to submit is the proposal data sheet. And because this is something that I am submitting as the PI and because this is something that is required for the process, we've configured it so that the next form loads automatically. But of course, as a faculty member, I might be very busy. I might have a class to run to or a student wants to come talk to me during office hours. So maybe I won't be able to get to this form immediately. In which case, we've also configured the system, Laserfiche, to send out email notifications, um, in this case, to the PI, to let them know and, and make sure that they have um, uh, this notification that will remind them to complete the task. So this email text just says, hi, um, thank you for submitting your notification of intent and please make sure to submit your proposal data sheet, which you can access directly from the email. So it's very convenient for the faculty member. They don't have to call into the office and try to figure out what's going on or go physically to the office. All right, so as you can see, all the, the information that I entered on the previous form has been automatically populated here. So very convenient. I don't have to re-enter that information and I know it's correct. Um, and then I need to provide a list of other folks who might be involved in this process. So for this example, let's just say that John Smith um, is going to be working with me on this research project. Um, again, if this is tied into a particular database, 
uh, you, you don't even have to enter all this information in manually. And let's, for the purposes of this demonstration, say that I forget or I haven't received John's uh, financial disclosure yet, so I'm just going to leave that blank. Um, in, in one of the use cases where we spoke to one of our customer users, um, the question came up, well, isn't the whole point that we want to be able to capture the information completely from the very beginning? Why are we allowing loopholes for folks to be able to submit things, forms, without having provided all the key information? And the feedback that we got is, for some processes, um, being notified is more important than having everything collected from the very beginning. So this is a good example of this. We want to have the other information related to this particular proposal, um, even if we don't have the financial disclosures yet, just so we have a better picture of what sort of resources we're going to need as the Office of Sponsored Programs to be able to support this faculty member. So I could have set this as a required field, in which case the form couldn't be submitted unless I uploaded the document, but, but I'm not going to. Um, because as you'll, as I'll show you later, we have um, measures in place to make sure that we do end up collecting all the information. So I'm going to go ahead and oops. the other great thing about an electronic form, if you notice here, is that because I didn't enter uh, a, an email URL, the form recognized that this might not be the correct format of information and has prompted me to enter in the actual email address. There we go. Um, this is going to be a research project. It's going to be a grant. And then this is the portion of the form where, as a faculty member, I might need um, someone else to help me take some of my course load while I am conducting my research. And again, these dates that I set um, can be used to automatically trigger notifications for the folks involved um, that actions need to be taken. All right, I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of this form. Extended absence from campus. Again, a dynamic section, so I'm going to select any environmental health and safety concerns that might be required. Oh, what is an STTR or SBIR? I am not too sure. So we've created a helpful tooltip, which is another feature of an electronic form, um, that can let us know if we're not unclear on a particular part of the form. Um, this, again, helps to reduce the length of these forms. It makes it look cleaner. Um, and just in general is more convenient for the end user. All right. And then I don't have any supplemental documentation. documentation. I've already submitted my um, funding opportunity announcement. So I'm going to go ahead and submit this form. All right, so after I've submitted the proposal data sheet, um, if you remember from the process diagram that I showed you earlier, the next step is for me to submit the financial disclosure. Now, again, um, there's a task that's been created for me in my task inbox, and this is another great feature of an electronic forms tool that you should be keeping an eye on. So forms is not just for the information capture piece, not just to upload information and enter in information, but it can also act as a task management tool for the stakeholders that, it, that are involved. And obviously, you'll, you'll probably encounter a number of different um, types of stakeholders that need a variety of different, that have a variety of different access to the system. So for example, if I work in the office of sponsored programs, maybe I'm interacting with my forms inbox or task inbox every day. So it's convenient for me that all my tasks are available to me in one screen. I can sort by date assigned or due date or priority or anything like that. But if I'm a faculty member and I, you know, this, this isn't my primary job interacting with this system, um, it's easier for me if I get email notifications. So once again, the system has generated an email. And a lot of this text that's within the email has been auto-populated based on things that I 
um, entered in, for example, the title of my particular proposal. It's very convenient for me, and it's also personalized for me without adding extra work for the administrative staff. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the financial disclosure form directly from my email. And I am go, going to go ahead and fill this in. Again, we have larger sections that we can hide and show. So in this case, we have a lot of instructions that are related to what a financial um, interest is, what the disclosure is about, what sort of things might count or might not count. Um, but if I have done this before, maybe I don't want to see all this text. So I'm just going to go ahead and hide it. So if, if I do have a significant financial interest in this particular project, then a notification will pop up letting me know that I will also need to submit a different form. But let's make my life easier for this demo and say, no, I don't really have um, a significant financial interest. I have read and understood the conflict of interest training. You can see that these are required fields as denoted by the red asterisk. So in this case, I can't go ahead and submit this form unless I have filled in the answers to these questions. And this is because this is the purpose of this particular form. So if I submit this form without having filled in this information, I have essentially not submitted any form at all, and I would have to redo it. So this is a case in which required fields are functionally um, useful. The other cool thing about an electronic form is that you can sign directly on that form instead of having to print it out, sign it, by hand and then scan it back into the system. Um, if I am working from a laptop like I am, I can type in my name. If I'm working from a phone or an iPad or some other mobile device, I can draw in my signature here. And then I can modify the style. And then the form will also automatically capture the date on which I submit this so I don't have to fill that in at all. Again, it's very convenient for me as an end user. If I wanted to, if I'm if I have to run somewhere, I can save this as a draft, in which case I'll get an email notification letting me know that I have a form in progress that I need to complete. Again, this is sort of um, uh, keeping conscious of, of your end user's um, work style and, and requirements when it comes to a solution like this. So I'm going to go ahead and submit this form. All right. So let's look into our process diagram and see what needs to happen next. We've submitted the notification of intent, we've submitted the proposal data sheet, and we've also submitted our financial disclosure. Um, and now what happens next is all of these things are routed to the Office of Sponsored Programs for the initial compliance review. Um, so let's see. Oh, yes, a task has been created for me as a staff member in the OSP to review the, the form. And what we've done is um, populated the information from the previously submitted forms and made them read only so that as a staff member, I can't change any, any of this information. And this kind of ties into what I was talking about earlier where for auditing purposes and security purposes, we need to make sure that information that shouldn't be modified by stakeholders in the process um, can't be, so that we're making sure that all the information that we have is compliant and is accurate. So I'm looking through this form and, oh, what do I see here? It looks like the primary investigator has failed to upload the financial disclosure for John Smith, uh, one of the other investigators. This is not good. I'm going to need that before I can continue. So I'm going to make a comment. Missing financial disclosure for John Smith. And I'm going to send it back to the PI because they need to um, give me that information. So what happens at this point is the PI gets an email notification. 
hey, your data sheet has been sent back for the following reason. It's missing, it's missing the financial disclosure for John Smith. Please make the necessary updates and resubmit. All right, that was an oversight. Let me go ahead and submit that disclosure. Don't need to change anything else. This looks good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and resubmit that. So once again, those things get routed back to the OSP for the compliance review. And I received an email notification letting me know that um, this proposed project is ready for my review, just in case I'm not keeping an eye on my task inbox. I'm going to look through this again, and I see, okay, this looks good. The financial disclosure has been uploaded. So it's reviewed. And once I click reviewed, it's going to be sent to the department chair for that faculty member for approval. Um, and then the great thing about these auto-generated emails, there are a lot of them in this particular process design, because as I mentioned earlier, this process takes a long time to go through, so it's important that there are notifications to let folks know that there are still tasks that are awaiting their review. Um, the great thing about these auto-generated emails is you can actually tailor them um, however you want to, despite them being automated. So, for example, if if I'm a department chair, you know, I don't have a lot of time. I have I have plenty of emails in my inbox. I don't have a lot of time to read through them. Um, so I've kept the text within the email generated very, very simple. There's a proposal, it's been submitted by this faculty member, please click on it to review it. And I'll show you later an example of, a, of an email notification that's a little more involved. All right, so I'm the department chair. Um, We've combined both the pro proposal data sheet and the financial disclosure information into one form for the department chair's convenience, so I don't have a pile of forms on my desk that I have to review. It's all consolidated into one. Look through it. This looks good. You know what? I also want to take a look at um, what steps this particular form has been through in the process so far. So what's been happening as, as I've been running through this process is that LaserFish has been tracking the actions and the steps that have been taken on this particular form, on this particular process. So for example, I can see as a department chair, oh, so at one point we were missing the financial disclosure for one of the key personnel. That's good for me to know. But um, we got that done, we got that resubmitted. And it looks like we are all good to go. It also looks like we've been very efficient because this process has only taken a little over 10 minutes so far, which is great. <laughs> um, so this helps give folks like the department chair who's not involved in the day-to-day -day, um, assembling of the proposal packet, but it still gives them insight, a, a kind of bird's eye view into what the process is, looks like and, and what's been going on so in case they need that information. All right, so I'm looking through all of this. This looks good. We have all this information. And I've spoken this to this faculty member before about this project. It's a very worthy project. We do need a cure. So I'm going to go ahead and approve it. So after this initial kind of proposal has been approved, what happens is LaserFish in the back end is saving all the information, the proposal packet, into our um, into LaserFish. This is just to make sure we had everything captured. And because it's approved, I'll show you a little later on, um, it's been saved in a folder for all the approved proposals. What's also happening is that the uh, primary investigator has been notified. They've been anxiously waiting on whether or not their proposal's been approved. Um, and here we've been notified that after a review by the department chair and the compliance desk, um, your proposal has been accepted. And they'll follow up with me in a few weeks um, with the next step in the process. So that's great. I can, I can let that go for now. On the flip side, for the Office of Sponsored Programs, this is where a lot of their work is going to happen. So now they need to work with the faculty member to submit the actual grant application itself. 
And just for the purpose of this demo, because I, I think it would be a little repetitive, um, we've, we've cut that portion out of the uh, solution design. So let's say that I've been working with the faculty member, I've collected all the grant application, and I've been able to submit that application before the due date. And the cool thing here is, like I mentioned earlier, because we've been able to capture the due date in the system, we've built in a step here where every, or I think a certain number of days before the grant application needs to be submitted, there is a reminder email that's sent to the OSP, letting them know that there is a deadline that's coming up and that that grant application needs to be submitted. So again, the faculty member doesn't need to see this, so they don't get notified, otherwise it would just worry them. But the OSP receives the notification just so we make sure it's not, it's getting taken care of. All right. So I have collected all the grant application information and I have submitted it through grants.gov, which is the primary um, grant application website for a lot of these funding agencies. But we do want to make sure that we're covering all our tracks when it comes to um, uh, recording all the activities that have been going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record that I submitted the application today. I'm going to upload the confirmation email that I received from grants.gov letting me know that my grant or the grant that I submitted on behalf of the PI has been received. And then I have the option to indicate whether or not just-in-time information will be required. So essentially what this means is sometimes um, uh, you're allowed to submit a grant application while still needing additional approval information or documentation or, or something else that needs to be added uh, as a supplemental aspect of this particular project. So even if it's something like as a faculty member, maybe I've published a new paper um, uh, a new article on this particular subject, and that might affect um, the decision of whether or not I receive the grant, so I would need to submit that information. Um, and what happens is that um, once the grant application has been reviewed by the funding agency, there will be a notification that's automatically sent out through grants.gov um, or through the NIH letting us know if there are additional documents that we need to provide. So let's say in this particular process, though, um, as the OSP, it seems like we've gathered what we needed, um, but I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if we might need additional information. So just to be safe, because this is a big project, it's going to involve you know, human subjects and virus samples and things like that, just in case, I'm going to mark this as unsure. So what this does is this keeps this task within my task inbox so that it's not closed out this grant application process for this particular process, but it remains in my inbox just in case I receive the notification from the NIH. And what do you know? Let's say I do receive a notification. Hey, you're missing certain pieces of information that we need. We need an additional budget uh, document. So it's a good thing that I have kept that task in my inbox. So what happens is I receive an email notification again, which I won't um, show you just yet. Actually, let's see. All right. So I've, as the OSP, I've received a notification, um, an email reminder, actually, um, that this particular project still requires possibly the JIT just-in-time information. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Um, this information, uh, this email contains a little more information because as an OSP, um, I want to be able to have a at-a-glance view of a particular task because maybe I'm dealing with 10, 15, 20 different research projects at once. Um, I don't want to have to open up the form every time to be able to see which particular project it's for. So the email has given me, based on um, information that was entered in on those forms, uh, some basic, a basic overview of what project that, I'm, that it is I'm dealing with. So I can go ahead and open up this task, which takes me to this form again. I can refresh my memory on all the key information about this particular um, proposal. 
And then if I hadn't received one, I can just select no, and once I submit it, that will close out the grant application process for this project. But since I have, I'm going to select yes, and then I'm going to have to um, indicate what sort of information is needed. Again, just to make sure we're tracking all the actions that are being taken on this particular process. So I'm going to upload the notification email that I received, and in that email, it told me, hey, I'm going to need to upload a, a additional budget information for this particular proposal. And let's say the submittal deadline is, oh, next Friday, which will be no problem for us because we are on top of our game. All right, so I am going to go ahead and submit this. Um, so at this point, as the Office of Sponsored Programs, I'm going to have to work with the faculty member, the primary investigator, to uh, assemble those documents that will be needed for the just-in-time submission. And again, for the purposes of this demo, um, let's say that that's, I'm going to fast forward a little bit, and let's say that that's already taken place. So I've collected all the just-in-time materials that are needed, um, and I have gone ahead and submitted that information. So again, I just want to make sure that I am recording all of these actions that I'm taking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload a zip file of all those um, of the budget upload and additional documents that I submitted, just so that we can save it into the, into Laserfiche with all the other documents. And I'm also going to upload the confirmation email. So just in case maybe um, one day the faculty member calls me up and says, "Hey, um, are you sure you submitted the confirmation?" and I can easily pull this up and show them. All right, so at this point, the proposal is complete. Go ahead and submit that. So that sort of ends the um, active um, portion of the proposal preparation that we've gone through. Um, so what happened was the primary investigators submitted their notification of intent. They were taken to the proposal data sheet where they filled in additional information about that proposal. They were give, uh, routed a form to indicate their financial interests in the project, and then all of that was routed to the OSP for compliance review. Um, we needed a little bit of additional information, so it was routed back to the PI to resubmit um, the financial disclosure information for John Smith. And then all of that was routed over to the department chair for approval. Once that was approved, we saved everything inside Laserfiche, we notified the PI that their proposal was approved, and then there was a process of um, compiling those uh, proposal documents and then submitting it by the Office of Sponsored Programs. Once they submitted that and recorded the date that they submitted it on and attached the confirmation email, then we moved into the just-in-time material section. And in this example, we did require additional documents that needed to be submitted. Um, and so the OSP were given an email notification that they needed to perform this task. They performed it, and then they were able to upload and record um, the related information to the JIT just in time. And then what Laserfish did in the back end is it saved that information, and then it also generated an email notifying the primary investigator that their proposal has been complete. So here we go. So this this puts my heart at ease. I know that everything that I've needed to do to, for this proposal has been completed, and now I'm just waiting on hearing back from the funding agency to see whether or not I have uh, received that information. And just as a handy tip, it's given me this basic information. Not that I don't already know this by heart, but it's given me this key information about my proposal just for my information. All right, so I want to show you real quick, now that we're done with the process itself, of what it looks like when we've archived all these documents inside Laserfiche. So um, the great thing about this is that, you know, usually when you're dealing with a lot of paper and a lot of manual processes, staff members have to compile everything, make sure everything's put together, maybe put everything in a manila folder or something like that, staple things together, paperclip things together, and then file it away in a filing cabinet according to whatever system 
that they've set up. But any system that is based on paper, no matter how efficiently done or organized, is not going to be as um, convenient and effective as an electronic system. So imagine if you have all your documents in a filing cabinet and um, the faculty member or executive leadership calls you up and says, hey, you know, we're, we're considering um, this faculty member for tenure position. We want to pull up their proposal specifically for this Zika virus cure that they're looking into. Um, we need this information as soon as you can get it to us. Um, if I were working with filing cabinets, I would have to drop everything that I was doing and rifle through those cabinets to try to find this one document. But with laser fish and with an electronic system, what I can do is I can either search for that document within the system as a whole, or I can easily navigate through the folder structure um, that has been created to find all the relevant documents for this particular project. Um, so uh, this, this, you know, I can pull this up in seconds and I can respond to executive leadership in seconds. And this makes everybody happy because the leadership has the documents they need to make their decision on the tenure um, for this faculty member. And the faculty member, you know, it reflects well on them that we have this information on hand. Um, all right. Uh, the other thing that I want to show you when it comes to archival and storage of the documents that you're dealing with is when it comes to something like records management. So because these documents are still active in our system, at some point we're going to need to refer to them again, um, uh, you know, when the, when, the, when the funding agency responds. Um, so at this point, these aren't records. These aren't classified as records. They can still be modified. They can still be moved around. But let me just show you an example of a student record. And um, records management is important because um, uh, because um, with certain types of documents, especially those involved in grant management, you're going to have to set retention schedules on uh, to make sure that you're retaining these documents for the um, required amount of time. And especially with grant or proposal-related documents, like I mentioned earlier, this is important for the institution as a whole because the research funding that an institution gets can reflect well on the um, you know, reputation of that particular institution. So it's likely that we're going to have to retain this information for a period of time, um, if not permanently. So it's key that with the system that we've chosen, not only can it help us streamline the process itself of capturing the information and routing everything through the approval process, um, it should also allow us to apply a records management tool. So what I'm going to show you here with a student record as an example, um, we've been able to store the key, key metadata about this particular record. And if we wanted to, um, we can view the uh, records management information directly from within this interface. Um, I don't think... So as an example, this particular student record, um, we've recorded what date it was filed, presumably when the student was admitted, um, and then currently our retention schedule is set to permanent. So this record will stay safe in our system in LaserFiche, and no one will be able to mess with it or change it or move it around without us knowing about it. So that is a good thing. All right, so that concludes the live demonstration portion of it. Um, hopefully this uh, gave you some ideas for some of the processes that you deal with. A lot of these processes, you know, capturing information, approval processes, signing off and reviewing, um, and then archival is, is common to any process that you might be dealing with. Um, but I can talk about this all day long. Um, I think what's more impactful 
is if I show you or talk to you about a use case um, that uh, has been of, of an institution that has been using eForms and LaserFiche to streamline their grant management process. And so today I'm going to share with you really quickly a case study um, about Hunter College. And I love telling this story because it's a great and representative example of the power of electronic forms. So Hunter College, if you're not familiar with them, they were founded in 1870, so one of the older institutions that um, that exists in the States. It's the largest college in the City University of New York system. They have more than 23,000 students and almost 600 faculty members across all their schools. Uh, all in all, they receive about $50 million per year in grant funding um, from federal, state, city, nonprofit, and private funders. So in terms of some of the challenges that their Office of Research Administration was facing, um, key to that was that their processes were very paper-based and very manual. Um, if you can see in this um, map here, uh, the Hunter's kind of buildings and schools within the campus are spread throughout New York City. And because staff had to assemble all the proposal documents manually, including having to courier documents between campuses and then storing them in filing cabinets. Um, this made for a very labor-intensive process, very time-consuming, and also made finding these documents extremely difficult, especially when executive leadership asked for statistics on previously funded projects. Um, as a public institution, this is very important for them. So aside from being labor-intensive and, and um, time-consuming, there was also a lot of cost involved with handling all this paper, um, storing it in the cabinets, in storage rooms, and then currying and mailing the documents between the campuses. So all of this, of course, was made more difficult by the fact that the Office of Research Administration only had 10 people to support these faculty members, so the administrative burden on the staff was huge. And these issues drove the college to find a solution in LaserFiche and implement LaserFiche eForms to eliminate that paper and improve their operational efficiency. So what did their solution look like? Well, they started off by converting their paper forms, which you can see here, into an electronic form. And these forms faculty members could access 24-7 from anywhere on or off campus. So there was no longer any need to courier those documents. They could upload proposal documents directly through these forms, which would then be automatically routed to the relevant offices for review through this kind of um, process automation step. And then to the department chairs and other stakeholders for approval. This eliminated the need for um, manually compiling the proposal packets like they had to do before. And as I mentioned, it saved a lot of the couriering costs. And as a bonus, reduced turnaround time for the proposal preparation because we didn't have to wait on documents arriving to the office. Having the automated process also meant that proposal packets could be automatically routed and archived into LaserFiche according to a predetermined folder structure. So here you can see that for Hunter College, their grants are sorted by department, by school or location, by year, and then within the department folders are folders named um, to match the faculty member that was awarded that grant, along with any documents related to that particular process. This meant that staff no longer had to file everything away in filing cabinets, but more importantly, it also meant that they could pull up these documents or reports on previously funded projects in seconds or minutes when requested. And then finally, as they started rolling out their new automated process, they were also making sure to go back and digitize a lot of these archive proposal documents from decades before. Um, which brings me to my favorite picture, which is the before on the left-hand side. You can see it's a very color-coordinated, organized system, but it's on paper. Um, to afterwards, when they had moved 
everything into Laserfiche. So this is what their filing cabinets looked like. And they were able to get rid of these. They were able to convert the office space that used to be storing these documents into useful space for additional personnel and things like that. So what an amazing contrast of Laserfiche in, at, in action at Hunter College. And through their Laserfiche implementation, Hunter has seen a number of improvements. Um, they eliminated the cost of courier services and reduced the time spent on compiling and processing the information that they received. Um, because Laserfiche is able to track the actions that are taken on a particular document, like I showed you earlier, um, they are easily able to make sure that grant proposal documents have not been subjected to unauthorized access or changes. As a bonus, um, through uh, digitizing all this, they were able to provide secure and mobile access to these documents for uh, research staff when they were either on the road or working remotely. And then um, they were also able to sort of gain peace of mind knowing that because all of their documents were um, electronically stored and had backups, um, that in the event of a disaster, like a fire or a flood or um, a storm, like Superstorm Sandy, um, that all their vital information is protected and that they can resume working even if the office or the, the network goes down. So a, a very successful story at Hunter College and, and um, pioneered by um, Carol and Julian, who's their Associate Director of Research Administration. She's been a great champion for the institution and implementing Laserfiche and working with us has, has um, been a joy on both our ends. And, um, and we're very happy to see them uh, take the solution, run with it, and achieve such great success with it. So that concludes the presentation today. Um, as a recap, I sort of talked a little bit about why we're focusing on the topic of forms. It's not just a simple replacement for your paper forms. With eForms, you can um, capture information. You can automatically route that information through approval chains and reviews, collect signatures. You can um, distribute decisions by email and, and other methods to the stakeholders involved in the process. And you can archive everything uh, securely and consistently in your system afterwards. Um, and then I showed a live demonstration of a grant management solution that we've built out. Um, it may not look exactly like a, like a process that you deal with, but hopefully it provided you with some ideas and inspiration for how you can use these tools to automate processes of your own. Um, if you'd like a more comprehensive demonstration, one maybe that's more tailored to specific needs that you have, we can absolutely get that set up for you. Um, either you can go to the link that's shown on this page here, or you can contact me. My, in, my contact information is in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. So now we have a few minutes left. Um, I want to open up the floor for questions. Um, feel free to enter them in, in um, the uh, chat box or the Q&A box on the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, one question that we have is, um, with a solution like this, how much IT support is required? Um, and, and that's a really good question because with a lot of institutions, we know one of the common challenges is that IT has so many different systems and things to worry about that it's, it's sometimes difficult to um, get those resources in setting up a system like this. Um, and, and I think uh, it speaks to how user-friendly and easily deployed and maintained a system Laserfiche is in that with a lot of our users, higher ed users, um, including Hunter College, um, aside from sort of the initial setup, uh, the end users have been able to run with the system on their own. So the forms can be built um, without requiring any technical expertise. Um, the demo that you saw today, I built out, and I, I'm in marketing. I don't have a technical background. It's very user-friendly software. Um, and so that, that helps reduce a lot of the burden on IT to support a system like this. So 
um, yeah, if you're strapped for IT resources, um, I would definitely encourage you to look into a system like this um, that um, it is very user friendly and can be can be trusted in the hands of, of end users. We have another question. Um, what type of databases or other information sources can LaserFish connect with? This is a really, really good question. So in terms of integrating with databases, there are a few different ways that LaserFish can do that. Um, one of the easiest ways is we have an out-of-the-box tool called Connector. Um, that's a wizard-driven tool that doesn't require any additional programming. Um, that can do that can pass information back and forth between systems, not just with Laserfish, but maybe other systems that you have. So, for example, um, if you want to be able to pull up, um, if you're in your CRM system, for example, like Salesforce, and you want to be able to pull up documents related to a particular contact um, connector, just populate the button on the top of your your screen, and you can click on that and open up the document in Laserfish. Um, and then depending on the complexity of your, your integration requirements, uh, we have additional tools that you can use. So we have out-of-the-box integrations with a lot of um, existing uh, vendors. Um, I believe there's a page on our website where you can see, the, for example, e-signature tools and things like that we have out-of-the-box integrations with. But if you want um, more in-depth integrations maybe, you want um, to read and write information from one system into another. We also have um, a, a, a SDK software development kit um, and a very open API. So um, that can be easily kind of configured and built. So any sort of level of, of uh, connecting with databases and passing information back and forth can be handled using the system depending on what your requirements are. I hope that answers your question. Um, any additional questions? We have a couple minutes left. All right. Well, if you do think of any after the webinar, um, feel free to get in touch with me. Uh, you can call me at the number that's on the screen or you can email me directly. Again, if you want to see a more specific demo, um, we'd be happy to get that set up for you. Um, and hopefully this has been informative. Hopefully this has inspired you to think of um, solutions that you can implement in your department. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, we have recorded this webinar, and, and so the recording and the slides will be made available to you um, hopefully sometime this week, if not early next week. And feel free to send that around and share that with your colleagues and, and other folks. Um, yeah, and thank you so much for, for attending the webinar today. Have a great rest of your week.